gorgeous. Well, we have a chance to give back to God who has given us so much. Would the ushers please wait upon us for our morning offering? Our second scripture this morning is taken from 2 Timothy 1, verse 10. But it has now been revealed through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought light and immortality to light through the gospel. Such a wonderful saying, such a wonderful quote from scripture. You know, of all the fears that we have today as, as men and women, no fear is greater than our fear of death. But on this one morning, we can boast that we have overcome that power, that, that power of death. You know, many of us here have lived through quite a few wars quite a bit of bloodshed. And we live in an age now where you can push a button and destroy a city, destroy a target many miles away in an instant, and eat a sandwich at the same time. It just, death has just become something that's so commonplace anymore. We don't stop to think about it so much. We know how to kill but we don't know how to die. We don't know what to say or do sometimes when we face the prospect of our own death. And, you know, there's that old saying that death is certain by death and taxes. But, you know, there's a way to get around taxes. Or at least I've been told. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there is no way around death. You can't avoid death. You can't put it up and put it off. Kind of when it's your time, it's your time. And you know, you think, what are we doing talking about death on such a happy morning this morning? But if we can't talk about death on Easter, when can we talk about it? You know, the very essence of this day is that one man has slipped through the grave and he's come back to tell us about it. Death not hold him. And he now holds the keys of death and hell. You know, it's just such a wonderful affirmation today that Jesus has destroyed death. But let's pause for just a second and, and look at some of these words. The older versions say that uh, he has abolished death. But there's kind of one problem with that thought. If death has been destroyed, if death is gone, uh, someone forgot to tell the undertakers. There's a whole business built up around death. People still die every day. Cemeteries still fill up and new ones open up to make room for them. Death, we have a plenty. But where is the resurrection? How can we say that death has been abolished when death seems to stare us in the face every day. Well, let's begin with a basic question. Why do we still die? I think it's the most obvious answer is we die because of sin. Romans 5.12 tells us that death came into the world because of Adam's sin. First there was Adam, then there was sin, then there was death. Sin always leads to death, and as long as sin exists in the world, death will never be very far away. So how certain is the fact that we death? Like I said, there's no way out of that. You know, 
We talked about cemeteries, but what about the life insurance industry? There's a whole, whole industry built up on the fact that you're going to die, so they're going to insure you for that. I mean, it's just amazing how much time we spend in our lives truly thinking about death, but yet we don't want to talk about it. Oh, when I die, the kids will take care of me. And so we just push the mess on to another de generation, you know. When we die, the coroner has to fill out a death certificate, does he not? And there's a space on that certificate that says cause of death. Cause of death. And if we understand the Bible, the answer should always be the same. It should be sin, right? Well, they don't quite put that down, but, the, you know, sometimes it's sickness, sometimes it's cancer. Sometimes it's accidents, and sometimes it's just old age. But all those are symptoms of the one great cause of death, which is sin. The word destroy that's used in Timothy means to render powerless. And that's the explanation I like. We haven't destroyed death yet. It's coming. But through Jesus Christ, death has been rendered powerless. He rose from the dead. He broke the power of death forever. And one day, like I said, one day death itself will die. But until then, for us, it's, it's taken on a new meaning. This is what Jesus meant when he said, whoever lives and believes in me will never die. So, let's stop for just a second again and examine this. Let's look at the bare facts around Good Friday. You know, did Jesus die? Yes. Was he laid to rest in a tomb? Yes. We can all agree on that. Did he arise after three days? I think we can all here agree on that. Death could not hold him. This is God's good news. Death couldn't hold him. The grave could not keep him. He is the Lord of life. He conquered death by Dying and entering the realm of death, yanking the keys from the hand of the devil, unlocking the door, and marching right back out. But that one day, he died like we died. He was actually dead, completely dead. He was dead as any person could be. But he alone faced that death, defeated it, looked into its face, and just walked away. One day death will die, and I pray to God that day will come soon. You know, a long, long time ago, in fact, almost 4,000 years ago, Job asked this question. He said, if a man dies, will he live again? That was the greatest of all questions, and it was the question that Easter gives answer to. We all wonder what's going to happen when we die, when it comes to our time. How will it be with us when we enter into the shadow of death? Will we be afraid? Will our faith stand with us? The Bible tells us again that the state of death is sin. So consider that vision for a moment then. What happens if you sting? You get stung. But by taking the sting yourself, the bee no longer can sting anyone else. And that's what Jesus did for us. All the venom of death he took upon himself. And it's no longer any reason for us to fear. You know, we, we talked briefly to about what's going to happen 
this? Will we recognize other people? Will we know who they are? The Bible gives us a firm answer to that. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. You know, kind of a final note. When, when, when we bury something, when we bury someone, do we put a latch on the inside of the casket? Was there a tomb? On the tomb that Jesus was buried in, was there a doorknob on the inside of that tomb? Why? Because Jesus tells us we cannot come out on our own. He will be there to open the door. He will let us out. So this morning, a bright light shines from the Easter tomb, a light that vanishes the darkness and tells it to go away. We often think that death means going from the land of the living to the land of the dying. But for those who know Jesus, death means going from the land of the dying to the land of the living. So are you going to trust this morning in the man who rose from the dead? He's standing right here, right now, alive with open arms and inviting you to accept life eternal. The door to heaven is wide open. I invite you all to take a step of faith and allow Jesus to prove to you that he is alive. Each of us has that appointment with death sooner or later. But that's now a cause for rejoicing, not a cause for fear. All we have to do is trust in the one who holds those keys of life and death. It's the final proof that death has been destroyed. He left the tomb door wide open. We don't have to fight our way out of the grave when he calls for us to wake up. He left that door open. 2,000 years ago. So don't let your hearts be troubled and neither be afraid. The day is coming when God will wipe all your tears away. Until then, let the thought of this fill you with hope. There is a light shining from the tomb, a light that leads us from the darkness to the glorious day that shall never end.